The withdrawals were intense. It is very much the same similar withdrawals that you would um, experience if you were coming off of heavy drugs. <laughs> sad that he couldn't be in the first video in our new apartment but such is life so here we are anywho today's video is an honest q a on depression getting off of antidepressants anxiety things of that sort um i posted a picture on may 15th on my instagram so follow me over there if you don't basically the picture was me talking about the anniversary of me being one year off of antidepressants and then i started getting a lot of questions and i thought why not post a video let's get into that but first if you're new here make sure you subscribe we make christian videos on life love and dating to help you have hope and be free first question is how did you decide to start weaning off of your meds all right so if you guys don't know my journey i've posted several videos on here talking about getting off of antidepressants etc um and basically i'll just give a short rundown i was on antidepressants for almost seven years the one that ended up working for me was zoloft it was i took the generic zoloft um and I was on that 50 milligrams for several, several years, and then 100, and then 150 milligrams, and then back down to 100, back down to 50, and then that I was like at 50 milligrams for a whole year, um, and then we started tapering off to wean me off. But anywho, if you want to know more about my struggles with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, all that stuff, um, you can go watch the other videos. I'll link them below. So I decided to start weaning off of medication after I basically had gone about two years. Well, yeah, I had gone two full years without a single panic attack, without any like bits of depression. When in the past, I had had panic attacks pretty regularly even on my um, antidepressants I had very low dark moments even on my antidepressants and so basically I was I went two years without anything happening um, and that was really good and my psychiatrist asked me she was like would you like to consider getting off of your medications I think that you're in a place where you don't really need to be on them anymore and I was like ah, hallelujah um and so I had already kind of been thinking it but then to hear her say that and encourage me even more I was like okay yeah definitely also paul and i were trying to get pregnant are still trying to get pregnant and i know that antidepressants kind of lower your chances of getting pregnant i was very excited and thought and prayed about it for a while and talked to people in my family and obviously i talked with paul i went to paul and told him like hey my psychiatrist said like she thinks that i'm ready and i'm ready and you know this could help our chances in getting pregnant um i feel good about this and he was like are you sure like that's a big step are you sure you're ready um you know let's continue praying about it but if that's what you want to do then absolutely like I'm here to support you and so that was kind of yeah the deciding factor we both came to conclusions of yeah that it's time so yes all right next question is are you glad you went on meds for a while any regrets or are you thankful for them so I am very very grateful for the um time that I was on antidepressants, um, anti-anxiety medication, um, yes, I'm thankful for it. I don't regret getting on those medications at all. I think that the Lord knew exactly what he was doing and he led me down a path where I had solid um, medical 
um, advice and awesome doctors. My psychiatrist is amazing. She um, has walked this journey with me for like eight, eight years now. <laughs> and she knows what the heck she's talking about and she is sensitive to the Lord. So that was really cool to have that. I don't regret it. Um, there are side effects that come along with being on that type of medication for such a long time and those are the things that just kind of bum me out. Okay, next question is what has been the best change since you came off of the medication? So like I said, it's been a year since I've been off of the medications and the best change honestly is I don't need as much sleep as I used to need. I mean, I used to need like 12 to like 14 hours of sleep because antidepressants make you very just kind of like so just kind of tired all the, the time and so I slept a lot but I will say one of the side effects that I've noticed that's like long-term side effect that maybe will be with me forever I'm not sure hopefully not um, my memory is pretty jacked up. I will say that I don't remember a ton. Like there are like black spots in my memory. Um, not even black spots, but just kind of like really, really hazy. And like, I can remember that I worked at a church and I can remember like bits and pieces of it, but I don't really remember like it as a whole. Or I can remember that I dated a guy for three and a half years and I remember bits and pieces, but I do not, like there's so much of that relationship that like I just have a feeling I just don't remember at all. <laughs> Which I'm kind of grateful for, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's really weird and something that has stayed with me but it's not as bad like in the past year like I can look back and think about things and like I remember them very clearly and so that's cool. Next question is what's the best piece of advice slash encouragement you can give to someone struggling? My best piece of advice is to get to know who you are as a child of God. Be in the word. Be doing bible studies. Be doing reading commentaries um watching sermons on just like your identity as a child of god because for so long i did not understand the things that god has spoken over my life the 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 gifts the power the authority that god has given to me as a child of his and because i didn't know those things i think that i personally this is my own opinion all of this is my own opinion i think that personally i lived in depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts all of that crap for longer than i needed to um because i did not know who i was as a child of god's i did not know my power and authority um that i have to crush the head of the serpent um, the enemy and so because of that I lived in fear I lived in panic I lived in anxiety I lived in constant doubt of like God I know you're good but like I didn't really live out the realization that God is good 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 and he has given us so much authority on this earth so yeah that would be my one piece of advice is get to know who you are as a child of God. All right, next question is, was there any particular scripture that helped you during this time? There was a passage, it is Psalms 18, the whole chapter um, is something that I read so many times um, over and over and I just like devoured it and tore it apart. That chapter just, I know there are a lot of similar chapters like that in Psalms, but that one to me was just so good. I don't know why. It was like, I read it in NIV in my Bible and just like recognizing that David um, struggled with like, in my opinion, what I read, it sounded like he was struggling with suicidal thoughts. He wanted to die and he felt like death was um, I think one of the verses is like the cords of death are entangled around my neck or something like that. Like he felt like dying and death was constantly like 
tempting or pulling at him and when I just read that I was like wow okay David man after God's own heart David killed Goliath like the, it just comforted me because if he battled with that stuff then like it's okay for me to battle with that stuff but there was so much hope because it's not like he just was like oh death is coming at me I want to die and blah 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 it's tempting me and I'm struggling God where are you like within the same chapter he's saying like I cried out to God and God heard me and he was angry he was angry at David's enemies he was angry at the demons that were attacking David with um such darkness and God came through um and so there's just so much hope that's also the chapter that I just kind of read and discovered like okay God has given me so much power and so much authority literally to crush the head of the viper I would encourage any of you all to read Psalms 18 who are struggling or are working on coming out of that stuff um do it Next question is, did you experience withdrawal? Which medication was it? Ah, yes. So, withdrawals. I was on Zoloft, like I said, and I went up and down throughout the seven years of being at 50 starting off, then went to 100 a few years later, then went to 150 for probably a year, I think, and then down to 100, down to 50. And then um, my psychiatrist started tapering me off. So I went from like 50 to 40 to 35 to 32 to milligrams is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and went all the way down to like, I think I was like at like five milligrams or something. And then I stopped taking it. Um, so the withdrawals were intense. It is very much the same similar withdrawals that you would um, experience if you were coming off of heavy drugs um, because it is a heavy drug and it's in your body for a long time for me anyways um, and so my body was very very accustomed to it um, and so getting off of it my body was like wait what so the withdrawals for me it kind of varies, but I definitely had moments where I would just kind of like sit there and cry because um, like my brain was just struggling. Like it was trying to like relearn how to process things. And so there were like moments where I would just sit and I would just cry. Um, there were, I had horrible, horrible, horrible restless leg syndrome for probably a full month or so like intense restless leg syndrome, which if you've never had that, praise God, um, it's horrible because it also just, it means it leads to insomnia because as soon as your body relaxes and you're like falling asleep, uh, your leg kicks and your muscles spasm and you have all these spasms in your legs and my whole body actually would spasm, um, but, it was horrible. I didn't sleep for like a month and which which then led to more just exhaustion and fatigue and I was like lethargic. I was just a mess <laughs> during that time of the, the withdrawal and I had really really bad shakes. I would just like my hands would just shake like crazy and my body would just be shaking and I would just kind of rock back and forth just shaking. Um, that didn't happen for too, too long. I think that happened for like a few days. It was bad. It was rough. But honestly, looking back at it, I have so much peace. Like, and I had so much peace going through that. Like, the Lord was very much involved. And he just surrounded me with people who knew what was going on, who encouraged me, who walked through that with me and so I just really encourage any of you guys who are considering getting off of antidepressants one make sure that your psychiatrist gives you the thumbs up and you have a support system that is going to walk through this with you because you cannot and should not do this alone and make sure that this time oh hi 
<laughs> that this time of your life of you getting off of antidepressants you are really really very intentional about spending time with the lord all right next question how did the whole situation affect your marriage <sighs> honestly you guys it was really she's making herself a bed looking back on that time of me deciding to get off of antidepressants and me getting off of them um, it was a beautiful time for our marriage. It was 100% not easy. Um, it was not easy on Paul. He very much had to be just hypersensitive towards me and to just like, he already does a great job of taking care of me and he's so patient already and so just like filled with grace. <laughs> um, and it's, I, in my opinion, it's almost like easy for him to just pour out grace and to be patient and whatnot. Um, but this really tested that and he came through big. Um, uh, I think like literally every night <laughs> during these, this like four or five month period of me going through the withdrawal symptoms and stuff like that, he like gave me a back scratch like <laughs> every single night to put me to sleep, um, or to try to help me fall asleep so that was very sweet but he was just um yeah I mean yeah there were times when I just couldn't work I just had to sleep and he you know what 100% was like go go lay down please go take a nap like it's okay I got this I was really really grateful for that um and it has made our marriage just that much stronger so going through that trial um, also, a question was, how was Paul able to come alongside you in your journey? What did he say or do or not do? Um, again, like, he very much, he just kind of let me tell him what I needed, and then he kind of went with that. There were times when I gave him permission, like, please encourage me to, like, get up and go and do something and, and stuff like that, and so he would come in and be like, hey, babe. Um, maybe you should like get out today and go do something um, because during the withdrawals and stuff I just felt sick and just like ugh, gross and meh. but I wasn't like so sick that I couldn't get out of bed if I wanted to or that I couldn't like go out and do something like I wasn't it wasn't like that but there would be days where I'm just like eh, I'm just gonna stay inside or whatever um, and I needed someone to tell me like hey actually it's gonna be better for you mentally and physically and spiritually if you get out and go do stuff um so he would do that he would also come in and encourage me to get in the word hey have you prayed today let's pray together um spend some quiet time with the lord today that would be good for you like i needed paul to come in and challenge me like hey let's get out of bed um but do it in a kind and loving way and honestly there were days when I just, I didn't need Paul to do anything and he was okay with accepting that. Sometimes I feel like people are like, no, I have to do something. I have to be able to help them. I have to be able to say the right things. And sometimes the best thing to do is to just back up a little bit and let them figure it out for a day or two on their own. All right, next question is, do you believe that God would be disappointed if we took meds like that? No. I don't think that God is disappointed at all if I think that the Lord led me to my psychiatrist who then led me to getting on this medication I think that his hand was very much in it um, and I was so lost and broken and empty and I needed something um, I think that there is a time and a place to reevaluate why you're on certain medications, whether it's antidepressants or whatever, birth control, y'all know we talked about that, um, whatever it is, I think that there is a time and a place um, that the Lord will lead you to, to have a moment to reevaluate why you're on that medication. I think that a lot of times we want a quick fix. We want something that's just going to solve the problem like that. And 
sometimes we too quickly jump to getting on medication because they're a fast fix instead of like really like tarrying with the Lord. I think that's the right word. Basically just like battling it out with the Lord, like going to prayer, going to the word, talking to people. Sometimes I feel like we face a hard time and we're like, ah, I must be struggling with depression. Give me a pill. I need it. I need it. I can't feel like this anymore. And sometimes the Lord could be putting us in a lower situation so that we can say, Father, what do you want from me right now? Okay, you just want me to lay my life out in front of you so that you can pick out, tear out, rip out the things that are not of you. And it's going to be a hard season, but I'm here for it. And I'm willing to accept that pain for a little while because I know that it'll lead to something just more beautiful. Be careful, be very thoughtful. Weigh all of your options before you get on a pill because there are side effects. There are long-term side effects that are gonna last with me for forever. I needed to get on those medications. You might need to get on those medications and you're going to have to accept those side effects. And I'm not saying that to someone who's been struggling with severe depression for two years now and you're at your wits end and you're feeling like life is just not livable anymore like please talk to your psychiatrist and get on medication if that's what they suggest um but to someone who has gone through a hard month or even six months, I don't know, but yet you are living in sin or yet you have some things in your life that God did not place in your life and you need to let go of them or you have things that just the Father is telling you to move away from and you're not and so for these past six months because you refuse to listen to what the Lord is saying, you've struggled, you've had a hard time, you're feeling low, you're feeling in pain. Maybe it's not medication that's going to solve your problems. Maybe it's meditation on the word. That's just my opinion. That's just my thoughts. I really hope that this video encouraged you. I hope that it gave you more wisdom and insight into this topic and this situation. And please, 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 please do not misunderstand what I'm saying. If you've been going to a psychiatrist regularly, if you've been meeting with a doctor, a therapist, or whatever, and their suggestion is, yeah, you, you should probably get on antidepressants, like, take that to the Lord and get on antidepressants. Talk to your family and get on antidepressants. Do what you need to do. Please get the help that you need, please. I'll link below, again, the faithful counseling or the the counseling website that I've linked before. Um, you guys, if you don't have a counselor or a therapist, these are licensed therapists that you can talk to online um, for a very reasonable price. So consider putting your money into that instead of Netflix or Hulu or Prime or junk food um, and take care of yourself get the help that you need. Thank you all for watching. So happy to be in our own place, to be filming in our own place. Hope you have a great rest of your day. What she wants to tell you, have hope and be free. No, but really, have hope you guys and be free in Christ.